Hey, this is Kevin again with Custom Micro, and today is part two of our configuration guide of the FS S3410-48TS-P. We're going to be covering DHCP. Let's do it. So now the next thing we need to configure is underneath advanced. We're going to set up DHCP for these different VLANs. So we're going to toggle DHCP on. Let's go ahead and create a DHCP pool. So click Add DHCP, give the pool a name. We're going to help this line up with our VLANs we created earlier. So I'm going to call this first one Inside Wired. You'll notice there's a little bit of an issue with our address range. You may recall earlier we used a slash 23 network instead of a slash 24. So in the graphical user interface, you can only set a range in the first part of that subnet. I'll show you later how through the command line interface you can use more of that subnet for your DHCP pool, the available IP addresses it can assign dynamically. For now, we'll just set it to 10.127.10 all the way from 10.50 to 10.254. It automatically populates our gateway IP. We have our lease time, we have our preferred DNS server, secondary DNS server, in this case, let's say you have an Active Directory Domain Controller at 10.127.1.7 and a secondary Active Directory Domain Controller at 10.127.1.8. Maybe if you don't, you could set the secondary DNS server to be something like Google or Cloudflare. So you could set it to something like 1.1.1.1. Or if you wanted to, you can use Maybe let's say your firewall or router is the secondary DNS server, in this case 172.16.127.1. We're not going to go into the advanced settings at this time because there's nothing there that we need to configure, so we'll click Save. And we'll just rinse and repeat with all the additional VLANs we created earlier. And then lastly, we'll do our guest network, which will be a little different. We'll call this guest-network 10.127.50, all the way from 50 to 254 will be our address range. And here's where we'll do things a little differently. We'll put in 1.1.1.1 as the primary DNS and 8.8.8.8 as the secondary. Your mileage may vary. If you just strictly want to use Google servers, you could do 8.8.8.8 .8 and then 8.8.4.4, I believe, is the other one. And then click Save. If you recall, VLAN 200 is just our transit VLAN to get us over to our firewall, our main router. So we're not going to set up a DHCP pool for that. There you go. That takes care of all of our networks. And again, we'll do some more work on this from the command line to fix that problem with our address range being so limited compared to our subnet size. We'll log in. Remember, the default username and password of the command line is admin admin. If you want to make changes, you're going to first need to type the word enable. That puts us in an elevated mode. And then we'll type the word configure. And we type the letter T for terminal. So it says enter configuration commands, one per line, and then if we need to end, we can end with control Z. And let's take a look at our DHCP pools. Remember how the network range was limited earlier? So let's fix that. So if we go into IP DHCP pool, and we put in the name of the pool, inside wired, now we're in configuration mode for that. We can say network 10.127.10.0.255.255.254.0. Notice how it's wrong in there. And then we're going to put in the range 10.127.10.50. The ending of the range 10.127.11.254 and enter. 
So now we fixed our problem that we had earlier. So now we can switch over. We can type the word exit, get out of there, or we can just probably type in the next one, IP, DHCP, pool, inside, wireless. We'll go in. And also, another thing you can do to make it a little bit easier is you can copy-paste. So in this case, we can copy this. We can paste it in. And we can make the changes we desire. So we want to make this a 254. <clears throat> We're fine with the, where the range starts, but we want it to end with dot .21.254. Dot we'll hit Enter. We can take this and use this as our template. So now let's go into our next one, IP. DHC, DHCP pool, voice over IP phones, and it let us switch to that without having to exit out first. We're going to paste in what we had earlier, and we're going to change some variables. We're going to change this to dot thirty, dot thirty, and dot thirty one, and hit enter. Then we're going to go arrow up and change to the next DHCP pool, which is IP cameras. We're going to arrow up and we're going to change this to dot 40. Dot 40 and dot 41. Then we'll arrow up, change to our next one, which is our guest network. And then we'll make this 50, 50, and 51, and enter. We'll exit out of that section. So in order to save the changes that we just made, we have to exit config mode. So we'll type the word exit, and then we can type write mem. If I tab, you'll notice the command is write memory. That saves our configuration. Always, always, always write mem. If you do not, you will regret it. That will write the running config to the startup config, so if the switch reboots for any reason, you'll have your current config. It's a common mistake people make. They forget to write to memory, but you've got to do it. Now that we've done that, I'm going to show the running configuration again. And now if we look at our DHCP pools, if we scroll up just a little bit, which are up at the top of the list, we should see our ranges have changed now. And let's take a look at several of these to make sure everything looks right. And sure enough, it does. Notice now our network has the right subnet mask, has the right DHCP range, and that's true of VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. Everything looks great. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so you can catch all the other parts of our configuration guide for this FS S3410-48TS-P network switch. Bye.